friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are finishing up this ketchup project. It's been four days since we started this ketchup. I just got so busy with the harvest. And then this weekend, Josh and I cleaned out our garage. We got the doors finally so we can start remodeling and finishing the bonus area. We've been waiting for those doors for eight weeks now. And so we took this weekend to organize the garage so we can finish some remodel projects, which meant food preservation took a back seat. Now that it is Monday, it is time to get back to work on getting this food prepped and preserved up. So we're gonna finish our ketchup project. That's the number one thing on the list today. I did go ahead, if you watched when we started this project, I did add some tomato paste and I wanna add a little bit more tomato paste. This is the consistency we're looking at right now. It is still way too runny to consider this to be a ketchup, like a dipping sauce. So we're gonna heat this up and start reducing it down again. And we're gonna add six more cans that are six ounces of tomato paste in this ketchup to help thicken it up a little bit. While we have this simmering on the stove and we're reducing this ketchup down, we have a bunch of other food preservation projects we're gonna work on today. I started peeling a bunch of garlic because we are gonna be making some fermented goodies and we need garlic for that. I went up north to the farmer that I used to be part of their CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. I used to go up before I had my own garden, I would get a weekly share of produce from his organic farm. And now that I have my own garden, I don't need to be a part of his CSA anymore, but I can't grow everything myself, so I buy bulk produce from him at toward the end of harvest season. And I'm gonna show you what that big haul is that I got. And we've got to start preserving some of that stuff up today. Now that we have the ketchup boiling away, I wanted to get this going first so that it could be simmering and thickening while we do our other projects. Let me show you what we have out here. These are the jars that I pre-washed the other day. They've just been sitting here waiting for me to can up the ketchup. We've been ripening these pears since we picked them together from the orchard at the other house. And they are nice and ripe now. So we're gonna make some infused vodka and then we're also gonna make some infused bourbon with some of the apples that we picked from the orchard at the old house. Now here I have a bunch of garlic I've started peeling for some of these peppers over here that I purchased from my local farmer. I got four pounds of red jalapenos. We are gonna make sriracha sauce with this. We got two pounds of red serranos and a bag of ghost peppers. Now my brother doesn't watch my videos, so these ghost peppers and a lot of these serranos and red jalapenos are gonna be for some gifts that I'm gonna be making for him for Christmas. And we're also doing some of those infused vodkas, those are gonna be gifts for Christmas because those are gonna have to sit a while. And then let me show you the other goodies that we got that quite honestly have been in my kitchen and they've been overwhelming me. And so I'm excited to work on getting them out of my kitchen so that I can feel a little less overwhelmed. This part of the year feels overwhelming sometimes. It's fun, it's exciting. I love getting all these projects done, but I don't just have this stuff that's sitting here. I also have both of my refrigerators full of produce from my own garden. And so it just can feel like a lot, but it's still a lot of fun. These two boxes, I don't really have to do anything with except carry them downstairs and put them in uh, wooden crates. Here I got 80 pounds of yellow onions. These are organic yellow onions from my local farmer. And they're absolutely stunning. So I'm gonna try to keep these fresh in the basement all winter long. So we're gonna see how well that goes. And then I also have two boxes which amount to 80 pounds of red onions from the same farmer. And these are gonna go in the basement as well. Last year, from the same farmer, I ordered 80 pounds total. So I doubled 
what I ordered last year because that only got me through until about February. Clearly that wasn't enough to get me through a whole year. So this year I doubled what I ordered. I got 80 pounds of red and 80 pounds of white or yellow. And we're gonna see if that lasts us the whole year. We are gonna watch these very closely down in the food storage room. If they start to go bad, we'll start to preserve them up. And then I got three boxes of bell peppers. Two of these boxes are what are called second bell peppers. So in here, these are seconds because some of them have, this is a sunburn on this pepper, so you can't sell this for a perfect price. But 90% of this pepper is totally fine. So what I'm gonna do is preserve up these peppers so we can have organic peppers diced and sliced in the freezer all winter long and we can enjoy organic peppers. Organic peppers where I live in the winter are so expensive, I cannot afford them. But these are very, very affordable. They're about a dollar a pound for organic peppers and I'm gonna preserve them up and I'll be able to use them and I won't even know a difference. Now I also did purchase a whole box of firsts. So these are bell peppers that don't have blemishes and we're gonna make a bunch of stuffed peppers for freezer meals out of these and we're going to take these and turn them into dinners that we can enjoy throughout the following months. So these definitely need to be taken care of. We are not gonna to get to all of these today, but we're gonna to get to some of these other projects so that we can start clearing out the refrigerators so I can get some of those peppers in the refrigerator and we don't have to worry about them going bad. That's the whole thing when it comes to food preservation season is sometimes it can feel like a juggling act trying to manage everything and preserve up what is gonna go bad first so that you don't lose any of the beautiful produce that you either grew in your garden or you purchased from local farmers. We can't all do it ourselves, so it doesn't hurt to get a little bit of help from people that do what we can't do. So I'm gonna get these garlic cloves peeled so that we can get on one of our food preservation projects right away. We got a ton of garlic peeled for our fermentation project for our hot peppers for our fermented hot sauce. But before we go ahead and do that, I wanna go ahead and do this fun infusion project so we can kind of clear some space on the island. Just to make sure there's no bad spots, I am cutting them open because some of them do have some bruising on them. This one looks like there could be a bug spot. So I just wanna make sure that we're working with really good quality fruit. I'm gonna taste it for quality control. Pears are my favorite. This is probably a quarter of the pears that I have out here. The rest of the pears are in the fridge. I just ripened the ones that I wanted to do this project with. The rest of them we're gonna use for fresh eating. I love pears. And a homegrown pear, there's nothing better. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That is so good. So I just sliced this pear open and there is a bad spot. So we're gonna save the good part, but we're gonna cut off the bad part. Last year was the first time I ever attempted anything like this. I had dehydrated a bunch of pears, which by the way, are absolutely delicious, but I still have some of those from last year, so I didn't wanna go ahead and make any more of those. But I took the cores from the pears that I dehydrated and I just poured vodka over it. I didn't want to waste the cores I thought maybe I could try and experiment and if it didn't work it didn't work that wouldn't have been you know I wouldn't have been out too much and it was one of the best things I've ever made so that's why I want to go ahead and try to make quite a bit of it this year I did look up specific recipes online this year last year I just poured vodka over the pear cores and honestly there's no real right or wrong way to do this Basically, just make sure you have 80 proof alcohol and you can use whatever you want. You could get as creative as you want. You could do cardamom orange. You could do cranberry cinnamon. You could use bourbon, whiskey, vodka, tequila. You could get, uh, you know, do like, a, oh, I could have done like a 
jalapeno tequila to make a spicy margarita or something. That would be good. I still have some hot peppers. Maybe I'll do that. And so you really, you can just let your creative juices flow when it comes to this. And I'm thinking that I want to gift quite a bit of it. That's why I'm making a lot of this. I'm wanting to fill about two thirds of the jar full of fruit. And I did wash these jars. These were new half gallon mason jars and I just washed them with some warm soapy water just so that they would get any factory dust off them before we went ahead and did this project. We have the pears all cut up and every few minutes I'm coming in and I'm checking in on this ketchup, stirring it to make sure we don't have any scorching on the bottom. But it is starting to thicken up now, which is great. If you missed part one of us starting with ketchup, the goal is to try to make this ketchup taste like our favorite ketchup, which is called Portland Ketchup. I grew up in Portland and there's a company called Portland Ketchup and they make the best ketchup. It is quite expensive and so I only buy it when it is on sale and that is our goal. We're going to try to get it as close to that ketchup as possible. Now that we have all of our pears diced up, I am going to pour vodka over them. The nice thing about the pears is they sink so I don't need to do anything to these once we have them done. They're just going to sit for about six to eight weeks and infuse all their wonderful flavor. Now we're gonna get going on the apples and I'm gonna do the same thing with the apples. I'm going to cut them up and check for any bad spots on the apples. The apples definitely had quite a few more bad spots than the pears did. And I'm going to fill them about two thirds or so the way full these jars and then we will get them covered. I was just thinking raspberry vodka would be really good. So maybe I'm gonna have to try that. The apples had a little bit more damage on the inside than the pears did, so I'm glad we went ahead and got to this project. The longer these sit in the fridge, the more the damage would have spread. I was able to get quite a bit of apples off of it, so that's good. So we're gonna give these apples to the girls. They're gonna enjoy those apples and pears. And now we're gonna get these infusing as well. I thought with the apple, Bourbon would go really well. I don't know if I have enough to fill both of these. Oh, that smells so good already. The apple and the bourbon, yum. I do wanna make sure that the apples are underneath the liquid so that we don't get any molding. We don't have to worry about the fruit molding as long as it's fully submerged. This is all I have left of the bourbon, so we're gonna put vodka in this one. How easy was that? Now we have the makings of some really beautiful Christmas gifts and maybe some Christmas cocktails. I'm really looking forward to this. And it's gotta sit for at least six to eight weeks, which will be perfect timing for us. Our ketchup is still boiling away. So while that's boiling, let's get on to our fermentation project. I am gonna use this crock and we're gonna ferment in this crock. I think I'm gonna do two different ferments here. One of them is going to be with these ghost peppers. This is gonna be way too hot for me, but it's gonna be perfect for my brother. And then we'll use some of these other peppers in this fermentation first project and then we're gonna do a second fermentation project. We're also gonna use some of our homegrown carrots, garlic, and onions that I've already peeled and washed. So first things first, we're gonna put some gloves on and I'm going to double glove because these are ghost peppers and these are cheap gloves and if the glove breaks, I do not want that ghost pepper spice on my skin at all. That sounds really, really awful. So we are going to make sure we are nice and protected. Fermenting is really fun because it's relatively easy. And these are some scary looking peppers. They smell good though. Ooh, but they smell hot. They smell hot. So all I'm gonna do is cut the end off, maybe cut them in half, put them in our jar. Ooh, they're hot. I get the love of spicy food from my dad and my brother. 
They both are addicted to spice and so am I. I love that heat. And this is definitely something that is gonna be way too hot for me, but I really enjoy making fun, hot, spicy recipes for my brother because I can really push the boundaries because he can really handle the heat. That's all of our ghost peppers in here. So we're gonna add a couple different other peppers to add some different flavor. So I'm gonna add some red jalapenos. So we're gonna give these a good wash. So jalapenos start out green and when they ripen, they turn red. So a ripe jalapeno is a red pepper. Sriracha sauce is made with red jalapenos. I just realized I'm putting my elbows on the cutting board and the cutting board had these peppers in it. So I need to be careful with cross-contamination. <laughs> Let's go get these washed up. I'm not gonna do anything super fancy with cutting these jalapenos either because we will be blending this all up after it's done fermenting. These jalapenos smell fantastic. They almost have a sweet smell to them. Now we have our red jalapenos in there. The next thing we're gonna add are some carrots. I am not peeling these carrots. These are the carrots that we grew in the garden and they have been washed. The microbes that you need for fermentation actually are on the vegetables themselves. And that is why I'm not gonna peel them. Fermentation is a really fun thing if you've never gotten into it. It can get really, really complicated. I try to make it really, really simple. I just throw veggies into a crock I make a simple brine, which I'll show you how to do that when we get to it, and then I just let it sit, and I'll show you how to take care of it. You can get fancy fermentation equipment. I have some of it. Some of it I can't find in the move. I think it's somewhere down in the basement, but you really don't need it, and I'll show you how to ferment without anything fancy. The last thing we're gonna add to our really pretty jar of ghost peppers, red jalapeno peppers, carrots, onions, is garlic. About half of what we peeled. I'm gonna set this aside, and when we have our next ferment, we'll make up the brine and we will put the brine in both of them. So I'll show you how to do the brine after we prep the veggies for the next ferment. But before I do that, I do wanna stir this. I've been trying to stir this every few minutes it's definitely starting to thicken up now, and we really, really, really don't want this to scorch. We still have to give this a taste test. So this right here is going to be a sriracha style ferment. So we're going to use these red jalapenos. I do have a written sriracha sauce recipe I can link down below, but the technique in that recipe is a little bit different than the one I'm trying out today. I'm doing an experiment this year. The recipe down below, you actually make a pepper mash. So you take your red jalapenos and you blend them up with the salt and some sugar and you, you create a mash and then you ferment that mash. I thought it would be a little bit easier to go ahead and just do it in chunks like I do with my other fermented hot sauces and then we'll blend it up after it's done fermenting and so we're going to see how this works. I am going to give all those seeds and stems to the chickens. Funny thing, chickens actually cannot detect spice and so you are not going to harm your chickens if you give them really spicy seeds. Now it can be very, very difficult to find red jalapenos in the grocery store. I have never been able to find them. The only way I've ever gotten my hands on red jalapenos is by contacting local farmers and I talk to them and I special order them. So I ask them to keep these peppers on their plants until they're nice and ripe and then I buy them from them. But you can find red serranos at the store and I have made sriracha sauce a lot, quite a few times with red serranos and it turns out pretty good. Sriracha is my favorite store-bought hot sauce, and so I love 
uh, making it at home. I did not make enough last year. We went, I went through it very, very quickly. So I'm excited to have it on the pantry shelf again this year. I hope this experiment turns out well. I am gonna add some garlic and some onions. We do have some more ingredients we need to add to this sriracha sauce, but we don't add those other ingredients until after it ferments. We have all of our peppers kind of ready to go. Now we need to make the brine to ferment this with. For a standard brine recipe, for every four cups of water, you're gonna use about two tablespoons of non-iodized salt. You don't want iodine in your salt when you're fermenting because it can affect the fermentation process. You also wanna use non-chlorinated water. We are on a well, so I don't have to worry about chlorine in my water. And we're gonna use some pretty warm tap water just to help melt or dissolve the salt. This is a half gallon. We might need to make two brines, just depending on how much brine we need. I did wanna show you from the old house, I did take some cuttings of the fig tree. So hopefully we can root out some cuttings and grow these just like we grew out our elderberries from some elderberry cuttings. So this is an experiment. I'm excited to see how this works. I'll bring you along the whole time and it's either going to be a success or a failure. So we now have our water. This is half gallon, so we're going to add four tablespoons of salt. The salt is what helps create an environment for the microbes to thrive and the mold to not grow. Stir, we're going to stir this until it's dissolved. Now that our salt is dissolved, we're gonna pour it over our veggies. And this is how easy fermenting is. Looks like I'm gonna need to make some more brine. When it comes to fermenting veggies, you can really use whatever veggies you want with a brine solution. This is, that was one, two, three, a standard brine solution. You can add a little bit more salt to it if you want to. I don't like my ferments to be too salty. The more salt you add, the less likely you're gonna get mold. Making fermented veggies or hot sauce or anything can seem super complicated. It really doesn't need to be that complicated. As long as you have a simple brine solution that you know, so for about four cups of water, you're gonna put two tablespoons of non-iodized salt. You can really almost ferment whatever you want. That is about a 3% brine solution, I believe. And you don't need any fancy equipment necessarily. Some things make it a lot easier to ferment. They make fermented pickle tops and weights and all the things, but you don't have to have those things. I probably will need to make a little bit more brine. Now, if you do have some of the fancier equipment, it does make fermentation a little less hands-on because you don't have to worry about mold as much because you buy weights that weigh the food down underneath the liquid. If you're going to get mold, it's going to be the food that is exposed to air. That is how mold grows because mold can't grow in an oxygen poor environment, which is anything below the water. And those do make it easy, but I'll show you how I can do it without any fancy equipment. I'm just going to put some canning rings on and Basically what I have to do is I have to stir this every day. If you have the weights that keep it below and you have the pickling tops and everything, it's a hands-off approach. Mine is just a little bit more labor intensive. I'm putting it on a cookie sheet because fermentations have a tendency to bubble over because they're gonna get really bubbly really quick here. And so instead of it bubbling over onto my counter and then onto my floor, it'll bubble over onto this cookie sheet and it'll be a lot less mess to clean. Now there still is a little bit of food that is sitting at the top here. So what I like to do when I do these ferments is I do stir them every day, especially the one that's really full, because that just helps get the top particles of food underneath the brine and you're constantly rotating it and you're not having the same stuff. And that just ensures or helps ensure less likelihood of mold happening. If you're gonna go to the effort of doing this fermentation, it's always best if you can try to avoid as much mold as possible. If you had the really nice weights, I don't own the weights, and you had the pickling tops, that helps prevent the mold as well. Now, I was not completely happy with 
how I filled this jar with the coast peppers. I overfilled it for fermentation. I wouldn't be able to stir it. And I was just worried that with that bowl on top, I was gonna get mold. So what I did is I dumped all the contents of a ghost pepper ferment in here. I mixed all the veggies up so that I would have a good mix. And I'm gonna put half of it back into this jar with the fermentation brine. And then I'm gonna put the other half in this jar so that I'm going to be able to mix this. It's really important that I'm gonna be able to get in there and mix it so we don't get mold. I'm much happier with this. I'll go in here and I'll stir both of these every day along with these ones. And I probably will shake brandy and vodka because it looks like the apples are floating on the top just to make sure everything stays underneath. And we don't get any molding. Now I did put a mason jar ring and lid on here, but on here I just put a towel with some wire that I found in my husband's because in the move, we lost our junk drawer, which I'm happy about. We don't have a junk drawer in this house, but I don't know where any rubber bands are that are big enough that will fit around that jar. So those are gonna sit there. They're gonna ferment for at least five days and we'll move on to the next step with that. So this is really, really bubbling now. You can see how thick these bubbles have gotten and how much it's reduced. So when we started this project, the sauce was all the way up to here and it's reduced almost by half. So I took a little bit out and it is bubbling over so I need to wipe that up before it dries. But I let it cool a little bit and you can see how it's kind of separating. So I think that means that it's not quite cooked down enough. But I do wanna give this a taste test and see if we're kind of like on the right track when it comes to flavor. That's good. It's not super sweet. It's pretty tomatoey. It's not too salty. I think, well, let's open a jar of our favorite ketchup. And we do need to taste this next to it so we can see. Okay, so that is a lot thicker. It's actually sitting I don't know if you can tell it's kind of flattened because I've been moving the bowl, but it actually was sitting on top of itself and there's no separating. The liquid isn't oozing out here like it was on here. So let's give this a taste test and see the flavor profile. I don't normally just eat ketchup by itself, so it is kind of weird to me that I'm doing this. All right, this is a lot, a lot sweeter. This has clove and I think cinnamon in it. Ground clove and ground allspice, which I haven't added any of that to this yet. And I can taste that in here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of clove, not too much. I think I'm gonna add some more vinegar too because this has a lot more zing to it. It's a lot sweeter and I can taste that clove. Okay. That is really good. I'm gonna start by adding two more cups of sugar. I'm also gonna add two more cups of vinegar. I'm also gonna add a teaspoon of clove. I wanna start really, really minimal on the clove and allspice. And I'm gonna do a teaspoon of allspice. We're gonna mix this up. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more salt too to help round out the flavors. I will have it written down exactly what I do for this ketchup so that if I really like it, I can redo it. So I'm gonna add one more tablespoon of salt. So I'm gonna let that cook down for a while. While that cooks down, I'm gonna clean up my pepper mess and clean up some of this ketchup mess. And we'll be back to taste test it in a few minutes. 
I think I've mentioned that my freezers are starting to get full of tomatoes. And I am gonna go ahead and start filling my roaster pan up with some of these tomatoes. They're completely whole, frozen. I just threw them in the freezer, took the stems off and they're And we're gonna start cooking these down in the roaster. This is my go-to way to preserve tomatoes. It's just a plain crushed tomatoes. There's nothing fancy about it, but it's a perfect base for soups, chilies, stews, anything that you would use a can of crushed tomatoes in. This is what I use this for. I do have a full video on it. I think it was the second video I've ever posted. And you can do this food preservation in the winter if you want. That's what I do quite often is I will wait and preserve tomatoes in the winter, but I don't have the freezer space. I picked up half that cow and it's taken up so much freezer space and I want to get a bunch of freezer meals in my freezer for postpartum. And so getting these tomatoes and dealing with them, getting them shelf stable is kind of my goal right now. I need to start clearing out freezer space so I can start putting the peppers in the freezer. So I'm gonna put these frozen tomatoes in my roaster pan along with a couple cups of water just to help prevent that from scorching on the bottom. And I'm gonna let these tomatoes cook overnight. So I'm gonna set this on about 350 degrees to let it get started. And then I'll keep a close eye on it. I'll probably end up adding more tomatoes to it as it cooks down. This is just gonna be a plain tomato sauce. I'm gonna put salt in it, a little bit of lemon juice, you know what, maybe I'll pressure can it so I won't have to put lemon juice in it. I'll probably end up pressure canning it tomorrow. We'll see how I feel tomorrow. But I wanna to continue to kind of start clearing some of these red tomatoes off this table because I also have tomatoes over here. I am trying my best to eat as many fresh tomatoes as we can so that when tomato season is over, we are okay just eating canned tomato products and not fresh tomatoes. So while I'm continually letting the ketchup simmer, which I did just get a little bit more out so we can taste test it again. So this is the new version of the ketchup. We're gonna give it a taste test. All right. And it definitely has a little more zing in it. You can kind of feel it when you, you know, like your salivary glands get going. That definitely has a little bit more zinc to it. We're gonna taste our Portland ketchup. Try to compare the, the flavor. This is still zingier and it's still a little sweeter. So I think I'm gonna add, let's see. I think I'm gonna add one more cup of sugar we're still not even to the double amount of sugar that that one recipe calls for. And I think I'm gonna add one more cup of vinegar. Problem is every time I add vinegar, I'm adding more liquid and it's gonna to have to cook down longer. But I think it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be worth it. Ketchup is a labor of love, my friends. I'm really glad I decided to double the recipe because hopefully this will be enough ketchup. Oh, my mom just got here. Hopefully this will be enough ketchup for us to last two years so I don't have to make it next year. That's my mom. Okay. My mom just stopped by because she's borrowing my Instapot because she's doing a project for me and she doesn't own one. And she just gave me a brilliant suggestion. I had no idea you could do this but you can put water in your roaster between the roaster and the liner. So I took these frozen peppers out and I put two quarts of water in there and then it becomes like a double boiler and it's less likely to scorch your whatever is in there. So I'm really excited about that. So I just did that. And now while we're still waiting for that ketchup, cause I just did another test. I put the ketchup in a bowl and it's still kind of oozing a little bit. So I want the ketchup just like this. This is the store-bought stuff where the liquid isn't coming out from the actual paste part. So we have a while more to go. While that's cooking down, I need to start processing these second peppers. 
I'm going to dice a bunch of them. I'm going to slice a bunch of them. And I want to make sure I get to them because there are a couple bad ones in here. I did buy these on Friday and they've been sitting here since Friday and it's Monday right now. So it's time to go ahead and try to get to as many of these as I can. I think what I'm going to do is cut the bad spots off them first and then we will wash them. I'll see the, uh, a couple bad spots. And then we'll dice them all up and get them in the freezer. I have all the seconds chopped. I need to wash them. These are the first. These are all perfect. There's no blemishes on them at all. But now that I've gotten the ketchup out of the refrigerator in my garage, I can get these into the refrigerator. So I'm putting these peppers in bags so that I can get them in the refrigerator until I have time to make a bunch of different stuffed peppers with them. These ones are kind of cool. I didn't realize I ordered these ones. Whoop, just dropped it. But they're kind of like this short squatty pepper and those are gonna be really fun to stuff. So into the refrigerator, these peppers go. I feel a lot better about that. So this is a 30 quart bowl and I've got all the bad spots cut off. So these still need to be washed. These are the ones we just washed up. I'm going to start slicing and dicing them. I have been buying peppers from the same farmer for three years. I buy bulk peppers and I've never had so much loss, but every single time I've done this, I have processed them the day I have gotten them and they've been sitting in room temperature for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, three days. So I am chalking this up to my fault that I did not process these the day I got them. The ones that didn't have any blemishes on them, they're perfect, no problems at all. They're in the fridge now, they'll be ready for me when I need to, or when I have time to sit down and process them. But right now, I have time, so we're gonna go ahead and get to this project. That's just the name of the game. I am normally not a sit down type of person when I do projects like this, but my hips are starting to hurt, and so I am gonna sit down and start this process. And I probably am not gonna get to all these tonight. I can't imagine that we're gonna get to all these tonight because I'm getting tired. But as long as my ketchup is cooking away, I'll keep chucking and getting this done. I need to sharpen my knife. So let me go do that. I was gifted some reusable Ziploc bags in my P.O. box and my food saver is still not working. So I'm going to try and use these for the first time and I'm really excited about these. They're a silicone, let's see, it says, this is a 1.3 gallon or 5.2 quarts. It is food safe, freezer safe, travel friendly, and dishwasher safe, that's awesome. So I can, I think these came from Amazon, so if I can find them, I can link them down below. But I'm gonna use these because my food saver is not working and then I don't have to use Ziploc bags. And they kind of stand up, they stand up nice, so that's awesome. Put that there. I do like to chop these and have both diced and sliced. I use the sliced ones for things like fajitas and the diced ones for anything that you would use diced peppers for. One of the reasons I didn't have time to get to these when I bought them was because Josh was available or he was off work. And so it was just really important to me that I was able to help him. We did a ton of organizing. The doors have come in and so it's going to be kind of switching focus again back to some remodel projects and updating and finishing some of those projects that we started a long time ago and we needed to move a bunch of the trim from the garage up into the bonus area so that he can start 
as soon as the doors are installed, putting the trim in, and then we can do some flooring projects and some painting projects and all those types of things. So just using my time to help him was really awesome. It also felt so good to get the garage kind of organized. We're not yet to the place where we can park our cars in the garage, but that is our ultimate goal and we will get to that. It's just a matter of one thing at a time. And I could be out there organizing the garage right now, but I really need to focus on peppers right now. We have our first bag filled and it feels like these have a nice seal on them, which is what you want when you're freezing. I'm gonna try to get as much of the air out as possible. I'm gonna lay that flat. And now that we made room in the freezer, we can stick this bag of peppers in the freezer. That doesn't fit there, so I'm going to do some rearranging. Stick that right here. And I just found three more, or four more tomatoes, so we're gonna get these in the roaster pan. We're making great progress. This is all I have left to chop. And we have one, two full bags of chopped peppers. And these are a gallon and a half, so we have a lot. And then this one is almost full of sliced peppers. This one is about half full of diced peppers. But I wanna get going on the ketchup. I did add a few more tomatoes to our roaster pan. I'm gonna cook it with the lid off. Before we're done in the kitchen, I'm gonna fill that thing up with tomatoes. I did change and put some comfy clothes on because I've been in the kitchen for a long time and I'm starting to get a little bit tired, but we need to taste this. I did dip this in there and let it cool off a little bit. Woo! That is it, I think, I think we did it. There's a lot more zing to it. It's definitely a little sweeter. Let's taste our Portland ketchup. Yep. I think we did it. Mm hmm Well, the Portland one is still a little bit sweeter. But I don't know if I want to add any more sugar. Let me show you how thick this is now. Look at those bubbles in there. It is so thick. And remember, we started with this all the way up to here. I'm gonna clean the backsplash when we're done. Every time I keep wiping it off, more splashes go on there, so we're just gonna clean it when we're done. But this has cooked down, it is about right here in this pot. This was a 30 quart pot. I think I'm gonna give it another 20 minutes or so. I'm gonna finish those peppers and then we're gonna get this in the canner. Since this is gonna be so hot going in the jars, I am heating up some water to water bath can this. I just tasted them both again and I am gonna add one more cup of sugar. So the amount of sugar I'm adding is the amount of sugar that the second, one of the recipes I was following. So I started with the ball recipe, which was the lower amount of sugar. And then I had another recipe that I found from someone online and I'm going with that higher amount of sugar. I want this, this has taken me, <laughs> it's been on the stove now for five hours today. We probably had it on the stove for four hours last time we were cooking it. I want this to taste just as good as our favorite ketchup if I'm gonna go through the effort of making this homemade ketchup. So I'm gonna let this cook for another 20 minutes or so. While that's cooking, I'm gonna finish dicing up the peppers. It may seem like a lot of work to preserve your own food and make your own condiments, but to me it's 100% worth it. Knowing where my food comes from, keeping the money that I spend in my local economy, being able to picture the person that grew the food for me is just something that means a lot to me and it's worth it. And it makes my life a lot easier come fall and winter. I now have my peppers diced and sliced for most of my recipes come this fall and winter. So even though right now during food preservation season, it's busy, 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 I get to relax quite a bit. And I kind of look at this just like when I make freezer meals. I make freezer meals and I take a day and it's busy, but then 
it's worth it in the end because I don't have to cook that often. Even though I love it, I don't want to have to do it every day. We did it! We got all those second peppers chopped, chopped up, sliced up, ready for the freezer. So we got a total of four of these huge bags of diced and one sliced. I go through a lot more diced peppers. It's gonna make my life this fall and winter a lot easier because I'm not gonna to have to dice any peppers. I can use these in so many different ways. So excited about it. Now, Josh did, he's home, it's late. He did carry down the onions for me so I don't have to carry those down. So let's go ahead and get this ketchup canned up. I think we are gonna call this done. So if these types of things interest you, like growing your own food and preserving your own food, but you don't have the ability yet where you are in order to do that, you still have the ability wherever you are to learn the food preservation skills. So I kind of got into this whole like growing your own food and food preservation back when Josh and I first got married, which was eight years ago. And for the first five years of that, we lived in a small suburban lot. I couldn't grow anything because the whole entire lot was shaded except for maybe a few herbs here and there. And I attempted to grow some carrots and potatoes on my front porch. But I took those five years and I learned the skill of canning, dehydrating, and freezing, learning how to source locally grown produce and meats and dairies. I am not perfect at it, but I took that time in order to learn some of the skills that I didn't have that I was able to build in that place. And then once I moved to where I was able to learn to grow food, then I took that time to learn to grow food and I'm really grateful that I had the time to learn to preserve food before I had the ability to grow food. Those are two different skill sets and it would have been overwhelming to try to learn the skill of food preservation and the skill of growing food at the same time. So I wanna encourage you that if you're interested in this, there's a website called localharvest.org. It's a nonprofit website and they help people find local food producers in your area. That's where I found my farmer that I buy a lot of bulk produce from and I have built a wonderful relationship with him. And he that is also the website where I found where I buy my local meat from as well. So if you enjoyed this, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you are new around here, I would love you to subscribe and join. And I just hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'm really glad with the progress we've been making on this food preservation. We still have a lot to do before we are done with food preservation, but I'm really excited with the progress we made so far today. So I wanna say a huge thank you for being you, for being here. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.